of LJQ Podcast. Welcome to FLJQ Podcast, where we tackle stories and review the readings in Philippine history. This is episode 1, entitled Manila Galleon Trade Benefits and Problems, with our speakers, Ms. Fritzy Hanna F. Kamingao, Ms. Loijan C. Bakang, Mr. Jalen A. Besson, and Mr. Jester Van Y. Kaling. And I am Juris M. Kabuto, your host for today. Before we talk about the events and people as well as the benefits and problems of our topic, let's have an overview of what is this Manila Galleon trade. The so-called Manila Galleon, also known as Now de China or Now de Acapulco, is a Spanish sailing vessel that made an annual round trip with two vessels making the journey yearly, one outgoing, the other incoming, across the Pacific between Manila here in the Philippines and Acapulco, in which now in the present is Mexico. The trip lasted approximately 200 days, the return voyage alone taking 70 days. Through the Manila galleons, the Amerasian worlds were linked by untold luxuries and wealth. Spices and silk for the Americans and the Mexican and Peruvian dos mundos, pillar dollars or pieces of eight for the Asians. The Manila galleons or Manila Acapulco galleons sailed the Pacific for nearly three centuries, bringing to Spain their cargoes of luxury goods, economic benefits, and cultural exchange. This galleon trade was the sole means of communication between Spain and its Philippine colony and served as an economic lifeline for the Spaniards in Manila. The Spaniards in Manila came to depend on the success of the voyage that when a ship went down at sea or was captured by pirates, the colony was plunged into economic depression. On its return voyage, the vessel brought back huge quantities of Mexican silver and church personnel bearing communications from Spain. You may wonder what is inside those vessels or what do they trade way back then? So the far most important cargo in that vessel is the Chinese silk. Other exotic goods were also included in the cargo such as perfumes, porcelain, cotton fabric from India, spices, precious stones, and many more were transshipped via the galleon. In 1811, the last galleon from Manila sailed for Acapulco, Mexico, and the government's monopoly of the galleon trade came to an end. So the Manila galleon trade lasted for 250 years and ended in 1815 with Mexico's War of Independence. Now equipped with the overview of the Manila galleon trade, let's hear from Mr. Jester Van Y. Kaling to share the key events in this treaty and their roles. Thank you, Juris. So even before the arrival of the Spaniards, the Philippines had already been trading with their neighbors. Hulu and Manila were trading centers of the archipelago. After the Spanish conquest and the settlement of a large part of the Philippines, Manila became a leading commercial center of the Orient. In 1571, after gaining control of the Malay trading center of Manila for Spain, Miguel Lopez de Ligaspi sent two ships back to Mexico laden with Chinese silks and porcelains to be exchanged for needed provisions. In this way, the Manila galleon trade was established. Spain was uniquely well prepared to conduct this commerce because of the convenient geographical location of Manila and America's large supply of silver. Tempted by the lucrative trade, Chinese immigrants converged at the Perian or Alcai Syria of Manila and Minondo as early as 1637. Chinese merchants eager for silver carried to Manila fine silks, damask and other fabrics, gemstones, finely worked gold jewelry, and porcelain. Other products shipped aboard the galleon were brought from India, which are the cottons and other fabrics, Japan are the lacquerware and screens. The islands of Indonesian archipelago are the aromatic substances, pepper, cloves, nutmegs, and maize. In Indochina are the gemstones and hard wools. And the Philippine island themselves um, are cinnamon, coconut products, beeswax, and fabrics. 
By 1687, a community of Christian Chinese and Mestizos was already formally based in Binondo. Retail and small credit businesses came under the control of Chinese Mestizos. However, the commercial restrictions were placed on the trade due to the complaints of the merchants of Cadiz and Sevilla. Merchants in Spain found that an expensive, high-quality merchandise from Asia competed too successfully with the Spanish exports to America and argued for severe restrictions on the volume of the trade over the loud complaints of Mexican and Philippines advocates. This purposeful limitation after 1593 led to the proliferation of contraband trading. Thank you, Jester. Now let's welcome Ms. Fritzi Hanna Kamingao to discuss who are the key people who have been involved in this treaty and their roles. The only active Filipino involvement was in the construction of galleons, in the cutting of massive and heavy Philippine hardwoods, hauling and transporting them usually to the far off shipyards of Cavite, Mindoro, Marinduque, or Masmate. Toponyms in the Mundoro remind us of triggers of Filipino forced labor. Now, Jen, where the nails were built, Kalapan, where the overburdened Filipino carpenters kept the huge and heavy logs into prepared wooden planks, and of course, Puerto of Galera, where the completed galleys were safety moored. The route was difficult and dangerous. So Spain had several war flats to protect the galleon. Many individual merchants rest and lost their lives, but sizable fortunes were accrued. Upon the arrival at Acapulco in 1634, the traveler Fray Sebastian Manrique noted, This prophet made all hardships and dangers appear as nothing. Between 1565 and 1821, the strips took place almost without interruption, and such was the importance that this commercial ship acquired that, in practice, became the mainstay of Manila. In all that time, an estimated 400 million silver pesos arrived in Manila to acquire Asian goods, so rich a trade turned into a cosmopolitan city that could be easily seen in the great buildings erected by the merchants and Spanish civil and religious authorities in the old town called Entramoros. In September 14, 1815, the Galleon trade between the Philippines and Mexico ended a few years before Mexico gained independence from Spain in 1821. Thank you, Fritzi. Now, to further discuss on how this Manila Galleon trade was established, let's have Ms. Loijen Bakang and Jalen Basin. Hello, everyone. So, as the title suggests, it's time to share about the benefits of the Manila Galleon trade. Positive results of the Galleon trade were the intercultural exchanges between the Philippines and the Americans. Symbolized by no less than the Mexican-made version of Antipolo, chosen as the patroness of the sailors who protected them from the untold perils across the Pacific. The mango de Manila, tamarind and rice, the carabao, cockfighting, Chinese tea and textiles, including the famous maton de Manila. The use of nipa, palm rim coats, or the shirgo chino, fireworks display, China wear and even tuba making came to Mexico through the Trans-Pacific trade. In exchange, the return voyage brought innumerable and valuable flora and fauna into the Philippines. Avocado, guava, papaya, pineapple, horses, and cattle. The Moro Moro, Moriones, and the image of the Black Nazarene of Quiapo were also of the Mexican origins. The considerable number of Nahuatl or Aztec elements crept into the Philippine languages, such as Changge or Chantitzli, Cacao or Cacahuatl, Chocolate or Xochoatl, Tamales or Tamali, 
Kamatsile o kwao mochito, sayote o chayotli, singkamas o shikama, and tokayo o tokaito. The Mexicans, on the other hand, borrowed the Philippine words tuba, or the coconut toddy, hilan-hilan, or the ilang-ilang, and parian. Now let's discuss the problems brought by the Manila Galleon trade. The navigating effects, example, the neglect of native extractive industries like agriculture and arrest of population growth of the Manila Capulco trade far outbalance the advantages. Filipinos were forcibly ordered by the Alcalde Mayores to plant coconuts and abaca under the guise of support of the Indians. Failure to comply with the needed supplies of coconut oil and abaca fibers were heavily fined. Not everyone could engage in the galleon trade. It was a government monopoly and only privileged persons such as high officials of the state and the church and the crew of the galleons were allowed to engage in the trade. The galleon trade became more of a gambling activity than a commercial one with only a few individuals becoming rich through such undertakings. So, the galleon trade had a negative effects on an economic development in the Philippines since virtually all Spanish capital was devoted to speculation in Chinese goods. The agricultural and industrial sectors of the economy were not developed because of too much concentration of Spain officials on the huge returns from the galleon trade. In theory, galleon construction was not meant to, conf to conflict with the planting and harvesting schedules, but in practice, this was not the case. Thus, the growth of Philippine agriculture was further retarded, so that as early as the 16,000s, many of the significant Filipinos' cottage and industries, such as weaving and extractive industries, were being ruined and disregarded along with the agriculture as money and gains were channeled to the galleon trade. Forced labor ignited the Somod Somodoy Revolt when the Visayans were drafted to haul timber to Cavite and the Pampanga Revolt in 1660 when the overburdened and overtaxed kapampangans were inflamed by the forcible cutting and howling of heavy lugs the route was difficult and dangerous so spanish has several war fleets to protect the galleon even a successful voyage from manila to acapulco could be trying lasting from six to nine months this made the problems of provisions and health daunting it was unusual for more than 100 persons to die en route. Thank you, Loijin and Jalen, for the detailed discussion about the benefits and problems met during the Manila Galleon trade. Now we are done. I hope you learned something and thank you for listening. Once again, this is your host for today, Juris M. Kabudoy, and see you soon in the next episode of FLJQ Podcast, where we tackle stories and review the readings in Philippine history.